Against a Bucks team missing just Bobby Portis, despite the opposing Celtics missing Tatum, Brown, Smart, and Horford, Sam Hauser resembled prime Gordon Hayward by isolating and draining a game-tying bomb in traffic yeah. to force overtime. I am the one who knocks. It was a valiant effort from the severely banged up seas. Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. All five Boston starters scored in double figures, and Malcolm Brogdon added 26 off the pine. You have to show some love to Boston's depth because of that. Uh, oh, shit. My bad. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're gonna do that, we also have to show that same respect to Milwaukee for taking this very Celtic team to seven games last postseason without their second best player at his best in Chris Middleton. After a 40-piece from Drew Holiday, the raging contending caliber deer are on a trajectory they're accustomed to, led by, of course, Giannis Adetokounmpo. But as you'll find out, with the health status of this team's Robin and Cash Money Middleton up in the air, that pathway isn't the most ideal. Fans are going to be salty on both sides, but you play who's in front of you, and the Bucks were able to scrape out a W and OT against a scrappily shorthanded Boston squad that wasn't giving an inch, so let's talk about it. Right before that, YouTube's analytics tell me that just 18.2% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't already, join the family by subscribing. <laughs> Come on, man. That, 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 that is blasphemous. That is blasphemous. Yeah. Oh, wow. you're, you know you're insane. Bro, really? Yeah. What? Why not? If you're a basketball purist, if you love the drama of the association, or just like highlights and analysis, I promise you'll love this channel. Also hit thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. And for a follow back, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. While they did just seal their 11th straight win, the now half a game back of first place Milwaukee Bucks still have a bunch of issues. You can argue their offense isn't as balanced as it needs to be, with the guy who haters know as run and dunk man, often having to carry this system. There's nothing wrong with having your top dog do the majority of the heavy lifting on a game-to-game -game basis, but when that's what you have to rely upon to not win, but merely keep you in games, then it's rightful to question the place that's being drawn up by Mike Budenholzer, at least on a consistent basis in terms of the Bucks' fluid off-ball motion and screening throughout the course of any given game. Additionally, there's a different dynamic and feel with this 2023 Bucks team compared to previous years because of Chris Middleton coming off the bench now. Chris has filled out that bench role pretty well, to be fair. He had 16 off the pine and was a game-high plus 19 in the six-point win. He didn't play in OT, however. More on that coming up. Nevertheless, simultaneously conversing that narrative, which argues too much of the load is on the shoulders of Milwaukee's go-to weapons, Optimism isn't the strangest stance either, because considering the offensive rhythm and the rotations from Budenholzer haven't even come close to reaching their peak, yet Milwaukee's still on the second longest winning streak posted by any team this year, only behind the Nets 12 gamer, that speaks to how good the 2023 Bucks can potentially be at their peak. You have to remember, Jinglin' Joe Ingles has been a big time playmaker for this Bucks team in 2023. He wasn't here in the previous seasons that Milwaukee made their runs to either the title or deep into the playoffs. He adds a new element to this system with his pick and roll shot creation, his spot up shooting, and his still solid perimeter laterality defensively, despite a torn left ACL, suffered with his previous ball club in Salt Lake City, somewhat harboring his impact on that end of the court. Not only have the rotations from Middleton from the championship winning coach in Bud been weird, given Chris subbed in for the final shot in the fourth quarter, then wasn't given any playing time for whatever reason in overtime. But here was another questionable decision from Mike, at least in my opinion. With Portis out, I would have thought Sandro Mamushkelisvili would have been given time. Mamu needs to be played through his mistakes more. To be real though, and with Giannis, Portis, and Brooke being top players on this team and all taking up heavy minutes in the front court, Sandro's development isn't the main priority. And like Wiseman with the Golden State Warriors, who the dubs just traded away, Sandro just hasn't been given the chance to thrive. Mamush Kelisvili's numbers have been a lot worse in 22-23 in comparison to his rookie campaign last year, 
Still, I think Bud's going to need Sandro in rhythm for the playoffs. Maybe Bucks fans can let me know in the comments whether or not you think the New Yorker out of Seton Hall should be taking as many DNPs as he has this year. Does he deserve that? Let me know your take. But given Mamu's a role player, I've never even mentioned by name ever throughout all the Milwaukee uploads you may or may not have come across on this channel. That's why we just broke down a bit of his situation. He's a fairly important piece to this puzzle, especially when you consider relying on the health of Joe Ingles isn't the safest proposition he is getting up there in age. And you also have to consider that Portis hasn't been the most durable this year either. Not sure how Bud can rectify not having played a 6 foot 10, 240 pounder with a jumper through his mistakes more throughout the course of this season. He should have been in the game against Boston. Jay Crowder forcing his way out of Phoenix and pointlessly for his sake getting another bench spot for a top contender. Regarding the depth up front, Milwaukee is about to get a massive boost with Jay. But Giannis Adetokounmpo and Drew Holiday's beastliness can't go another second without being given flowers to. Minus Chris Middleton, it's been tasked upon the NBA's bona fide best player right now in Giannis and the utterly crafty primary defender but discredited scorer Drew Holiday to put the team on their back though. I put the team on my back, dude. Not that my current stance can't change and that Curry can't take back his number one spot once he gets healthy, but right now, you can start spreading the narrative that Giannis is the clear number one in the NBA. Quote unquote, run and dunk man has added savviness from the post, from the baseline with his fadeaways from the midi, and from that point has utilized his, if you will, Greek freaky God-given gifts, not just in terms of pure athleticism, but in terms of hand-eye coordination and naturally gifted basketball abilities to post 24 outings of posting 30 points and 10 rebounds within a game this season. That amount of 30-point double-doubles is best among all 450 players. Outside of his patented athleticism, or as haters would say, running and dunking, even outside of his elite rim protection defensively, these are the two best parts if you're a Bucks fan, or most annoying parts if you're an opposing fan about Adetokounmpo's game. Firstly, not the athletic force in his slashes, but his ability to both find the right body angle and downhill angle makes his said famous slashing an art in itself. That ability of course helps him draw, fend off, and power through the contact of any given matchup. The second most annoying part about trying to stop the freak is his improved playmaking. That and his defensive ability I want to cover in a separate video I've wanted to for a while now. For some reason I haven't though. Leave a thumbs up if you want to see that. But as we continue to watch Giannis, who hasn't played as much basketball throughout his lifetime like the majority of NBA players, let alone superstars, continue to polish and get more comfortable with his bag from beyond the paint, we're about to witness potentially the Michael Jordan type legacy we've all been looking to stack up against evolve right before our eyes. Championships, I'm predicting several more of them for this Bucks organization, are well within the confines of this decade's realistic expectations. The Freak and Holiday have had to create every opportunity for this team with the playsets not flourishing from Budenholzer to the smoothest extent, against Boston having to dig in and get every bucket to respond to the scrappy, albeit more than severely undermanned, but hospital-esque Boston Celtics to get the Bucks a half game back of the top seed in the Eastern Conference. Adetokounmpo and Holiday just combined for a merciless, undeniably presiding 76 points, 18 boards, and 16 dimes to put the entirety of Wisconsin on their proverbial backs. And I know, the Bucks get like zero attention from casual fans, so this may be weird to hear. They also get zero attention from the mainstream media, but what they're doing right now is pretty insane. Storming through the association with no sign of slowing down anytime soon, about to face the San Antonio Spurs before the All-Star break, and with manageably the 10th toughest schedule remaining among all 30 teams, I see a special spring for fans in and all around Cream City. My bad. Plus. <laughs> what are your predictions for the 2023 Bucks? Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time. Again, subscribe to help your boy reach 100k. Again, follow for follow on Instagram and Twitter. Let's do it right now. And as always, I appreciate all the fans I had. Hate me or love me. You watched. That's all you could do.